Anyway, plowing ahead. So we go out to uh, win stupid game, play stupid game, win stupid prizes. <laughs> uh. Anyways, calm down, Bill. All right. What I'm doing is I'm just trying to energy my way through this fucking podcast because I was just driving back and um, I was a, for the most part, I was a model citizen this weekend, right? I made sure that, you know, I didn't bring up politics. I didn't bring up mass. I didn't fuck, you know, I do it on this fucking thing. It keeps you fucking cunts all at the edge of your seat, getting all fucking mad. You know, spraining your fucking thumbs as you fucking write something to me that I'm probably not going to read. But, you know, makes you feel good. Um, anyway, so I was told not to do any of that shit. To basically not be who I am. Do you realize how fucking funny that is? Even though I know she's right, but can you imagine a fucking world where you could say, yeah, listen, honey, you know, there's going to be a lot of people out there, just no real housewives. Okay, you know, all that. Sh- well, that's not, that's unfair. Because Real Housewives is just Real Housewives. I'm trying to think of something annoying she does. I would tell you guys, but you fucking assholes would tweet it at her because you're a bunch of rats. Um. (laughs) All right. Plowing ahead. So we fucking load up. And I had the best time driving out there with the kids, my lovely wife, and all that. You know, we get out to the house and everything. Chilling out. I could actually see the stars. It was so quiet out there. It was amazing. There was all these mom and pop places and shit that I would have gone to had it not been, uh, you know, all this bullshit going on. We did stop at one point because we needed some snacks and we pulled into this one place and Jesus Christ, the fucking humanity in that place. It's It's just a fucking shame. All the money that is spent that you just don't have like one standard fucking level of education out there. You know, it's just, it's so fucked up. It depends on where you live, what books you get, (laughs) you know, how good the teachers are. These poor fucking people, you went in there and you just, none of, they didn't have a chance. They live out in the middle of the dessert, right? I'll always call it the the dessert. It's my little fucking thing. Remembering Greg Giraldo. It's kind of hard to fucking something with your ball sticking to your leg out here in the dessert. Um, Yeah, fucking hard, hard lives were lived in that place. You know, some woman came in looking all fucking methy and we had our masks on. So she pulled her shirt up. God bless her. And then in the end, she was standing in line behind us with booze and she was just covering her mouth and her nose with her hand. (laughs) There was some other guy over in the corner just like coughing. And I'm looking at my wife uh, and she's like, do you want to get some Pringles? I'm like, Neil, let's get the fuck out of here. All right. (laughs) I don't know what that guy is coughing up, but he is coughing his fucking brains out. Let's get out of here. So we got out of there. And um, anyways, the rest was all good. The rest was all good. But I don't like seeing that shit, you know, guy behind the counter, like his, his whole face looked like a gin blossom. It was so fucking red. And then his hands were as white as mine. I was like, Oh my God, fucking people addiction and all of this shit going on out here. I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. Then we go around the world trying to fuck. Oh, we're going to try to fix this country slash take all their natural resources. Um, so anyway, we go out there and, uh, I had a great fucking time. Um, my daughter learned how to whistle. I've been trying to teach. It's funny when you teach a kid how to whistle, you know, they, they make the noise with, with their voice. They go like, it's like, no, 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 it's just wind. So she just kept doing it and doing it and doing it. And then all of a sudden she got it and she was so friggin' proud of herself. And, uh, so now she can do it, but she can't do it every time. It takes her like 10 tries. So she starts laughing, and then she can't get it. So she's smiling, and then she goes, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. And she's got to, like, put her hand over her mouth and kind of, okay, here we go. And then she gets it. She's so friggin' excited. It was awesome, man. Um, so we drove back this morning. You know, it was great. I hadn't seen, you know, 
the family members I was with, I had not seen them in, since all this bullshit started. And uh, so it was awesome to see them. And uh, so this morning we left around midday. I was thinking maybe we were going to get stuck in some traffic going back to L.A. Usually around the 15, you catch that Vegas traffic. But then I'm thinking like, you know what? There's no nothing really open, open in Vegas as far as I know. So maybe we'll get lucky. And we got on the highway and bump, bump, but don't bam. It's just fucking wall to wall people. Like we were literally stopping, which never really happens out in LA. As bad as the traffic is, at least you creep along. I mean, you'll have like moments you stop for a second. We were stopping for like 30 seconds and I was like, this is a fucking accident. So finally we got past it and I saw the tow trucks cleaning up and, you know, the car and throwing some fucking plastic bumpers to the side of the road. And I was joking with Nia going like, you know, you should have to write an apology to everybody that you made sit in traffic when you caused this level of a traffic jam, provided, you know, if it wasn't just like literally an accident, but if you like looking at your phone and then you just spun out or hit somebody or whatever, they should make you part of that going out there, cleaning it up. They should make you write a fucking... (laughs) Write a fucking letter. It wouldn't deter anybody, but it'd be funny. So um, the only bad thing that happened when I was out there in Joshua Tree was I was driving along the road and I was and I was trying to find the house. You know, they're all kind of spread out and everything. And I slowed down and I, I saw our house that we were renting and I went to pull in and this guy in the car behind me, this truck, this gray truck, he had like a speaker, you know, where you could have like a CB or something and yell at people. And I was sitting there and he just goes, get the fuck off on my road. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I don't know what this guy's deal was. The thing that we rented had like Colorado plates on it and shit. So I don't know if that's what it was, but I don't know if he was fucking around or not. Um, I beeped at him. To see if he'd stop, like, what the fuck was I going to do? I don't know. Just natural. Um, Being a comedian, feeling like you're getting heckled or something. But afterwards, like, for the rest of the day, it was just making me laugh. Um, It was funny if he was just fucking around, but it was even funnier if he was serious. (laughs) And, like, I can't tell you how many times I've wanted to, like have somebody hear my complaint. Maybe I was going too slow and and that happens a lot. Maybe they they rent out a lot of those houses and this poor bastard always has to slow down because some shithead like me is like looking for the house. If that's what it is, it's actually fucking funny. But, um, you know, if you like roll down the window to yell at somebody in your car, that gives them the opportunity to yell back at you. And what I love about what this guy had was I hadn't... he told me exactly how he was thinking and there was nothing I could say. He couldn't hear me. So the guy totally wins. It's actually a great road rage sort of device for people. You know, they get to say it and then other people who don't have road rage will just be like, yeah, you know, it doesn't bother me, whatever. You know, whatever. Um, so anyway, we drove back. I don't know if I should tell you this, Lori. Should I tell you the story? All right, let's. I'll, I'll tell you the story. All right. So, what do people do when they go out to the desert? Right? They always take fucking mushrooms or peyote or whatever. So, I finally decided, like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm going to try it. So, my buddy told me to only take like four. All right. So, in my head, I'm like, okay, that means I should take six. All right? Because he's trying to ease me into this thing. It's like I'm only going to do this once. I'm never going to do it again. I want to fucking see shit talking to me. Right? So I say to my wife, I'm going to take six. And she was like, well, why would you take six? He told you to take four. So I'm like, all right, you're probably right. You're probably right. All right. So the kids are in bed. It's a four-hour ride. It's 10 o'clock at night. I'm like, fuck it. I'm going in. Right. So I take this shit. (laughs) (laughs) One pill makes you nervous. Right. So I take this shit. And uh didn't take long. Like 40 minutes later, it hit me. 
And it just kind of felt like I ate like a fucking pot cookie or something. And uh, I don't know. There was a couple of times like the toilet looked like it was breathing, you know, or like a painting kind of looked like it was moving. But other than that, I wasn't like seeing shit, seeing shit, right? Which kind of bugged me. I was like, fuck, I knew I should have taken six, right? But the whole time I was like nauseous. I was like, what is this? Is this like fucking heroin? Like you puke or something? And uh, I don't know. It was like, it was all right. I didn't, but I didn't like trip. I just kind of got into a weirder sort of, it felt like I ate weed or something, right? I know there's all these mushroom people going like, oh man, ah, oh, dude, you should have. Because everybody I know takes mushrooms like, oh my God, dude. And, and like, I, I understand myself and I understand like fucking <laughs> the universe and I'm one with it. And I was looking at all people and just feeling nothing but love. I, I, that didn't happen for me. I think because I've been facing all of these fucking things that I've been running from, uh, it kind of went the other way. Like after I was done kind of like shit, like vibrating and stuff, and I was sort of coming down, uh, I was left with this profound sense of sadness and loneliness. (laughs) And I was even thinking about people that I knew that I knew loved me and I still was still feeling that. And I was like, what the fuck is this? This is crazy, right? So whatever, I went to bed. And then the next morning when I woke up, I kind of, I think I pieced it together. It was like, it was actually a good thing. It was kind of bringing all of that stuff to the surface. And it's part of like the whole, all of this shit that I'm fucking finally, finally dealing with. I also made me realize that I kind of slept walk through my thirties and forties. All I was doing was trying to achieve shit because really that's why I got into this business was I'm going to do shit. That's going to make people laugh. And then people are going to stop fucking with me. I swear to God, it goes back to like the eight year old me. And then because I thought being on stage, everybody just automatically liked you. Um, and also Twitter didn't exist. (laughs) Hey, you ginger mongoloid, right? I thought if I did that, you know, everybody would like me, people would stop fucking with me. And then I also thought like, cause I was afraid to talk to, you know, girls and shit when I was younger, I was like, they see me on stage and they'll come up to me. I don't have to break the ice. None of that was true. You still, as a comedian, I think with a musician, you can kind of sort of brood off in the corner. And they'd be like, hey, I like, really like, like your ukulele. You want to hang out or something? As a fucking comic, you still, you still have to fucking, not only do you still got to work for it, they, they want you to be funny every eight fucking seconds, like what they just saw you doing. So, um, yeah. So then that made me start watching stand-up and everything. And then also stop paying attention in school and just keep fantasizing about, like, Just crazy shit. Like everything from fucking being the nude lead singer from ACDC to like winning the Medal of Honor. Like just fucking bananas. Like hero fantasies. And all of it came down to me not liking myself and not understanding all this bullshit that was happening to me. Um. So, But along the way, because of that, I really got into stand-up comedy and then I just wanted to be a comedian, but... Like, if I really get boiled down to it, it, that's the reason why I did it. I got into it. Um, And I think all of that shit that I then, you know, my 20s was figuring out stand-up and meeting all these great people that I've now been friends with forever. But my 30s and 40s, I just fucking, you know, plowed through and and didn't deal with all of this fucking shit that I, re- it's embarrassing. Like, I feel like I should have dealt with it by the time I was like 21, 22. And now I'm 52, going to be 53. So I think that that's what the tail end of that little experience was out there. Um, so it was a good thing as much as it wasn't like, I think if you're, if you kind of like yourself, <laughs> I think if you like yourself and you're at peace with 
shit that's happened to you, the people in your life or who were in your life or whatever. I think if you're at peace or you're not even if you're not at peace, if you've just fucking like gone through sadness and allowed yourself to feel sad, cried or whatever, but as opposed to being like, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a shit. I don't care. I don't give a fuck. Right. If you just fucking do that. Or maybe I'm just being fucking narcissistic right now and thinking that my experience will be your experience if you had roughly the same sort of thing. But I, I would be interested to hear what in anybody who's who's had something like that. Or I'll listen to your theories because I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to figure out why. Um, I, I, well, I think I did. I don't know. It was, it, but it was, you know. I did, you know, whatever. I fucking went to Joshua Tree. I tried to hallucinate. Didn't quite happen. But I mean, that's what's. <laughs> I gave it the old college try. I don't know. I also think like I, I'm just not like. Because one of my buddies is going like, "What's it like right now?" I go, "Well, you know, the TV looks like it's growing and it's going to fall, sort of." But not really. It's not like Alice in Wonderland, but it it looks like. But I know it isn't. And then somebody else goes, just go with it. <laughs> it's like, go with what? I don't want to fucking think the TV's falling on me. I don't know. The whole fucking thing was funny. So anyway, so I'm driving home and we get stuck in this traffic. Right. And. Um, my my wife was going like, where are all these people coming from? And, you know, I saw a couple of Amazon trucks. I saw I was like, well, look, some of these people live out here. Some of these are truckers. And then if you look around, we saw all these fucking RVs and all of this shit. You know, the uh, all the desert people with the cool trucks and the dirt bikes and all of that type of stuff. And um, I got to tell you, man, there, there's some people out there that have spent some fucking money on this shit. It's funny because you look at them. Like, you look at some of these big RVs. These things are not fucking cheap. It's like a fucking house. You know, as far as, like, how much it costs, like, in, in like, the middle of nowhere. Oh, which, by the way, we were looking at those tiny little houses again. You know, the little house on the prairie that they... These fucking assholes, they, they got this little house. It, like... The floor was particle board. Like you'd get splinters in your feet if you walked across it. It was on wheels. And there was a trailer hitch. And they just backed it onto this little piece of land. They wanted 75 grand for it. It's like, you know what? That's kind of, if you got a big enough piece of land, I kind of get it. Where it's like, all right. I'll buy this fucking house. You know, unless you're just like... uh Unless you're just like truly like a minimalist, you know? And I'm 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 wondering if can you be a minimalist and just be that and enjoy it and not have to tell other people about it. You know, but when you do get excited about something, right? I actually I I do get it. I do get it. Cause sometimes I look around all the fucking shit I have. Um that I don't even need, like throw pillows. That's my number one fucking thing. Nobody needs a throw pillow. 